On our last mission, Waliche and Lille sank the HMS Formidable, a massive British aircraft carrier. Sitting behind the jetties in Algiers Harbor tonight is the HMS Furious, another British aircraft carrier. So the big question we ask tonight is can Waliche and Lille sink a carrier on consecutive missions? They'd become Italian commando heroes in our nine mission campaign game with By Stealth and Sea. Tonight is our seventh mission and it takes us to Algiers Harbor. We have an even bigger goal. We're trying to beat our historical counterparts over the course of this nine mission campaign. After six missions, our historical counterparts have 49 points. We have 45, so we're losing by four points. In tonight's mission, our historical counterparts racked up a big nine points. That means for us to catch up to history, we have to score 13 points. We have another two brave, totally inexperienced crews with us on tonight's mission. Aboard SLC number two is Liam and McNeely. Some people say SLC number two is cursed, but just because it's had 80% of the breakage on the last three missions, small sample size, right? They'll be fine. Aboard SLC number three, Custard and Parcara. Now Custard's name can easily be translated into Italian, Crema Pastasiera, Crema for short. I have good news as well. Our engineers have developed an entirely new type of SLC, the Series 200. They've guaranteed there won't be anything that breaks. Working against us, however, we've discovered that the British have frogmen. Once we get near enemy ships, frogmen are gonna jump into the water and hunt us down. That doesn't sound very good. And lastly, because Algiers is so far away, <clears throat> each of our SLCs will start with two things wrong with it. I'm sure everything is gonna be just fine. Let's get started. Here's a look at Algiers Harbor on the night of December 12th, 1942. Our three SLCs will start in the northeast corner of the map. They'll need to make their way across the open water and approach the harbor, which lies over here. Our targets of opportunity lie on both sides of the torpedo nets here. We can see inside here our greatest target is the HMS Furious, an aircraft carrier. They would have to cross the torpedo nets and make our way inside the harbor to strike. However, we do have some good cargo ship opportunities as targets here as well, some two-point targets there. It may not be worth crossing this torpedo net to try to get three-point destroyers when the difference is only one point. We'll see how things look as our crews get near the mouth of the harbor. As we look farther to the south, we can see that we have cargo ship targets here outside the harbor and more lucrative targets as well behind the jetty and inside the torpedo nets. We'll have some decisions to make as we draw close. Here's a look at what our SLC 200 series means for our crews. Repair checks will be a four, five, or six instead of a five or six. So our battery, transmission, and ballast tanks have been improved for this mission. And we're gonna need it because each SLC starts again with two faults at the start of this mission. So each SLC will have to roll to see what two things have broken before this mission even starts because our starting card just isn't any good for this mission. For the defense, whenever one of our SLCs gets in the same location as a target, we have to roll for underwater dive teams that could detect us. If it's a Navy ship, like a destroyer high value target, that detection number is a nine plus. If it's a cargo ship, it's an 11 plus. Let's start out to see the problems that SLC number one has. Now this is manned by Weliche and Lille, who in our previous mission sank the HMS Formidable. We've given them an extra point of piloting skill with that experience point that we gained. We're hoping for minor damage with these and hoping that they can be repaired. Let's see what our first fault is. We, we'd prefer not to have a wetsuit fault. Okay, I didn't plan that. I really didn't plan that. <laughs> but a repair check is a four, five, or six. So there is some potential here that this will actually work out okay. Hoping for a four, five, or six, because if the wetsuit breaks, they immediately get stunned, which is bad. A five. Excellent, good. So Waliche and Lille continue their good fortune in avoiding problems by bringing out their exquisite repair skills. Let's see what the second fault is now. Battery fault. Okay, this one's not too bad because we have two battery tokens. So we can suffer one battery defect, defect fault and still have it not impact our performance. But with our new SLC 200s, a repair check is a four, five, or six. Hoping they can fix it, they get a one, they don't. 
So the battery breaks and we lose that. Now, if they get another battery fault, their SLC is immob immobile for the rest of the mission. Let's come down to SLC number two, manned by our new volunteers, Liam and McNeely. Now they are boarding, they are manning SLC number two, which historically over the last three missions has had an inordinate number of the faults that have happened during the mission. But they have volunteered to brave what some say is the cursed SLC. Let's see what their first fault is. Breathing gear fault. Okay, this is not so good was one of the things I was thinking on upgrading instead of the SLC series, because if they lose that, that means they will have no repair tokens available. And the repair check is a six. So it's looking like they're going to lose that right away. They get a one, which is about as far away from repairing it as you could possibly hope. So they lose that breathing gear token, which means they're minus one stamina and they cannot reroll anything that happens to them. Let's get their second fault now. Breathing gear would be good because that would mean, oh, the ballast, okay. The ballast means they have to stay up on the surface until they fix it. That could be perilous here because we don't like the surface anymore. But our repair check is a four, five, or six. Let's see what kind of repair skills Liam and McNeely have. Two. Okay, that's not very good. So um, their breathing gear is broken and their ballast is broken. That means they can only stay on the surface until they can fix it. We're going to fix it in the very first turn though. All right, SLC number three. Now this is custard in Parcara, but custard is crema in Italian. So here we go. Let's see what their first fault is. Ah, the dreaded wetsuit fault. No, they would be stunned if they don't make this repair check. And that starts off a sequence that usually ends in missions ending quickly and badly. We need a four, five, or six. This is a huge roll for them starting out. Ah, two. Ah, oh, that's terrible. You know, the wetsuit is so bad that I'm thinking we might want to re-roll that already. You know, we're actually going to do it. We're going to use our breathing gear fault and we're going to roll that again because if they get the wetsuit broken, it's just really bad. So we're going to try it again and see if they can fix it. A six, excellent, good. So we avoid the wetsuit fault. I think that was worth it here. So they lose, however, their breathing gear token, but we'll trade that. Now let's see what the second fault is. Warhead fault. Okay, so we have the basic prototype warheads. They need a repair check of six. This one's not so bad. Just It doesn't impact performance. It just means that they have to fix it before they can detach their warhead. So we can kind of leave that and fix it right away or get them diving or something like that. It's not a big deal, but it'd be nice if they could fix it on a roll of a six. Yes, they come through. They fix their warhead problem and they are driving on. Excellent. Okay, so all in all from six problems that we've handled, that's not too bad. SLC number two with their ballast and breathing gear, probably the worst off of the lot. But Parkera and Custard, or Crema here, survive that one by rolling and using up their extra die roll already. But that wetsuit fault is so bad, it just messes everything up. So now let's go to the start of our mission, which means that we have to roll once more at the start here, at our 12.30 turn, to see what our first turn's fault is. So one of these SLCs is going to get another fault, it's usually the cursed SLC, SLC number two. Of course it is. It really might be cursed. This might be the most imbalanced die I've ever seen. But Liam and McNeely, who've already lost their breathing gear and have already lost their ballast tank function, now have to have another fault. Hopefully it's something mild. Breathing gear or ballast tank would be good because it's already broken. The warhead fault. Oh, they need a six to fix it. They could have like the, this is, a four, okay. So now their ballast tank is broken and their warhead fault has is, is impacted here. So I don't even have room to put all these cards because there's so many things wrong with their SLC now. So they'll have to fix both of those things. We're gonna get them, well, we gotta, we gotta fix the ballast tank first, but anyway, let's go, let's go to the harbor and get started. We're gonna start with SLC number one. Now they have piloting skill, which means that they get to roll all of their piloting actions on two dice. So we're gonna take advantage of this and have them try to move on the surface three squares ahead. They need a four, five, or six to succeed and they get to roll two dice. And they, they fail, they get two threes. That's not a good start there. Um, now we're gonna have them try to dive and they need a four, five, or six on two dice to get that. And they, Come on guys, that's like not <laughs> very good. So they're exactly where they started, on the surface floundering around with their two piloting skill. 
Yeah, okay, this mission is not starting off so well. <laughs> SLZ number two, Liam and McNeely are going to take their full turn and fix their ballast tank fault. So I'm gonna remove that off screen. That means they can now submerge. The only thing's wrong with them now is while well, their breathing gear is broken and their warhead's broken, but at least that's an improvement. But they, however, stay on the surface as well. We're gonna need some luck to not get detected here. SLC number three, can actually function. I want to get them underwater because we're starting off rather grim here. They're going to use all of their action points and just dive. So now it comes to the detection phase. I'm going to do this off camera and I'll show the results in a minute. So at the end of the detection round, SLC number two gets detected by spotlights and then a patrol craft. SLC number one and SLC number three manage to avoid detection. So we've got some problems here because we've got both SLC number one and SLC number two on the surface at the end of our first half hour here. This patrol craft readies itself for the next, for the 1 a.m. turn and let's go to that now. We're gonna roll to see which SLC has a fault check. It's almost always SLC two, hopefully not this time. It's three. Crema and Par Parkera have a problem. Let's go see what that is. All right, let's see what their fault is here for this 1 a.m. hour. Transmission fault, a repair check of a four or five. This means they can't make a full move. So they're probably gonna to wanna to fix that right away. It doesn't put them necessarily in any greater peril, however. So a four, five, or six would fix it right away. They get a four and they fix it right away. Nice work, gentlemen. That takes that out of the equation. Let's go see what we're gonna do now here in the 1 a.m. move. So we're gonna start out now with SLC number one. They're gonna to try to get out of here by diving and then moving forward. Let's see what we get. They get a six and a two. They successfully dive, which is good. Now we're gonna have them try to make a full move under the water. Could we move away one to get out from under this patrol boat? You know, that might be actually a... Now we're gonna trust their piloting skill here. They're gonna to try to move ahead two using their piloting skill then to four, five, or six. They get a two and a two, so they failed. They failed three out of these rolls here. Not a great start for us. So the patrol craft stays on top of them, but they are undetected, which is good. SLC number three is going to try to move ahead one with a half move, and then they're gonna to try to power ahead with a piloting move. They need a four, five, or six in order to be able to pull this off. They get a three, so they fail, and they'll stay there. Gosh, we're having some struggles tonight. Now, SLC number two, they're in good shape, but they have a 50% chance to dive, and then they could try to move forward here. But if they're on the surface and they get attacked, it's pretty ugly. I think what SLC number two is gonna have to do is just submerge, and hopefully, when this craft comes in attack, they can survive that attack. I think that's gonna give them the best. They need, the patrol craft would need a nine or better to hit. And I think that's better than staying up, trying to, having a 50% chance that they'd be on the surface for the attack. That would be pretty bad. Okay, so now we're gonna do the detection phase here at 1 a.m. and see how that goes. So in the 1 a.m. detection phase, another patrol boat spots SLC number two, but SLC number one and three remain undetected. So now it comes to the time when we move the enemy patrol craft, and it's fairly straightforward. SLC number one is gonna to move to this detected craft and attack it. This is the big pull that we need. We're gonna do this one on camera here. SLC number two getting attacked right in the start by this patrol craft. So on a pull of nine or greater, they would get stunned. We're hoping for something nice and low. We don't want their mission, to, their evening to end so quickly. God. Get the deadly 12. So SLC number two's crew, Liam and McNeely, are stunned. Ah, and we have to reshuffle all our deck, pulling out the low card. That's not good. So I've moved their status to stunned. Fortunately, they're, ah, oh, this is looking pretty grim here. Well, this craft gets activated. We're gonna reactivate all of our card deck here too. We've now got two patrol craft bearing down on a detected SLC number two. I think what we might have them do though is move forward under the water and that would have them lose detection, but we'll think about that when we get there. Let's go now to the 1.30 a.m. turn and see which one of our SLCs has a problem. It's three again. So the cursed SLC is number three this time. Let's go see what their fault is. All righty, so here is what breaks on SLC number three is the battery fault. That's one of the good ones, I think, because 
that very rarely causes problems because you have to get two of them. So a four, five, or six, and they would still fix it though. You get a three, they're unable to fix it. Batteries reduced to 50% strength. Not a problem unless the battery breaks again. Okay, so let's go now to our actions in the 1.30 a.m. turn. So I think we have a plan here. Hopefully this will work. We're gonna try to have SLC number one with Balachi and Lile. They're going to move ahead one with one of their action points. And then once again, they're gonna to try to use their piloting skill to move ahead two. This will take a four, five, or six on one of these two dice. They have not had good luck so far. We get a six and a four, they do this time. So they fly ahead two squares and leaving these enemy patrol boats out of range and behind them. That's excellent. SLC number three, actually SLC number two, is gonna do something similar, but they only have one action point because they're stunned. However, we wanna have them lose the detection. So they're going to move, use their action point and move ahead one square, one spex under the water, which will leave them undetected. That'll leave the patrol boats having to flurry around to try to figure out where they are. SLC number three is gonna move ahead one with one action point, and then using their piloting skill, they're gonna to try to do a full move after that. They need a four, five, or six. Ah, oh, they get a one. Ah, oh, they're having a tough time here. Altogether, I feel like the dice roll gods are not favoring us tonight. All right, so now we go to the enemy detection phase here in the 1.30 a.m. turn. Things looking rather grim for SLC number two and Liam and McNeely. They were detected by searchlights halfway through the 1 to 1.30 a.m. time slot. Not, no patrol craft spotted us again, however, but that does mean that patrol craft number one and two are going to move towards them and attack. SLC number one and SLC number three again remained completely undetected. I think we must have painted SLC number two in neon or something like that because they have just been nailed by every type of detection. So SLC number two detected again, that means that the enemy response craft is for these two patrol craft to move on top and start dropping depth charges on them. Now this isn't good because they're already stunned from that first depth charge attack. If either one of these attacks succeeds, they are killed and knocked out of action. Patrol craft attacks need a nine or greater to hit. So here, their lives are in the balance. We need eights or less on both of these. A seven, they survive the first one. Here's the second depth charge attack from patrol craft number two. Ah, it's a nine. Liam and McNeely make it a mere hundred meters forward. They just had a cursed mission. I mean, everything broke. Gosh, I got depth charged twice, but we lost our first crew tonight. Liam and McNeely meet a watery death thanks to depth charges from patrol craft number two. And our mission is not off to a good start. That brings us to the end of the 1.30 turn. Let's go to our 2 a.m. turn and see what our fault is. Hopefully we get a two, right? Oh, yes, okay, so we get a two. That's at least a little bit of luck. Now let's go for our actions here and see what we're going to do. So SLC number one right now is heading right towards this jetty wall. So we're gonna have them turn to get in a better line towards their targets. So they're gonna to try to use their operational skill to do this. They need a four, five, or six on one of these two dice. They get a five on one. So they successfully make an underwater turn. Now we're gonna have to try to have them surge ahead two using their operational skills. Again, they need a four, five, or six on one of these dice. They get them on both, so they move ahead two hexes here, putting them in a relatively good position now, if we look at some of these targets here, to get at perhaps this cargo ship or one of these two cargo ships over here. SLC number three has a patrol craft right behind them. We're gonna have them move ahead two. They've been messing around with the, the skills there and not making it very far. We need to get them going a little bit here. So we're gonna have them move ahead too and use both of their points. Now we go to the enemy detection phase here in this 2 a.m. turn. Good news, both SLC number one and SLC number three have no problems with detection. They avoid the searchlights, they avoid the patrol craft. Patrol craft up here move randomly and kind of stay in the same spot. So we're actually looking in much better shape considering, well, all things considered that we've lost SLC two already here. Let's go now to our 2.30 a.m. turn and see which one of our SLCs has a fault. Oh, it's SLC number three. All right, so we're picking up our fault on SLC number three here. Get a warhead fault again. Now they fixed it last time. We need a roll of a six. They get a two, they don't. So the warhead's broken. That means that they'll have to fix it before they can use it. 
not such a big deal because it doesn't put them in any greater peril. Now let's go to our actions in the 2.30 a.m. turn. Let's start with SLC number three. Crema and Parquera are actually going to use one point to move forward. Then they're going to try to use their operational skill to move forward. They need to roll a four, five, or six. They get a six. Excellent. So they make a nice progress towards this target. We can head them right in towards these cargo ships here. This is good news for them. Now, SLC number one with Waliche and Lile. We're going to have them do something similar because we want to bring them over here for these cargo ships that we can see against this jetty here. So we're going to have them use their operational skill to try to move forward two squares. They need a four, five, or six to succeed on one of these two dice. Let's see what we get. God, we get a four. Nice. So they are starting to warm up here. Now we're going to have them try to use their operational skill to make an underwater turn. That'll get them pointed right at this cargo ship. They get a six. Excellent. They are starting to get their act together. We've got them pointed right at a cargo ship. Now let's do the enemy detection. Good news for us again. The enemy completely lose us. They are unable to spot either SLC number one or SLC number three. That means we're going to our 3 a.m. turn and we are undetected and approaching targets. We're not going to mess around trying to get inside the harbor. I don't think that's going to work. We're instead going to send both SLC number one and SLC number three after two point big cargo ships. Let's see where our fault lies. We're hoping for a two. Yes, we get the two again. So now it's our turn in the 3 a.m. turn. Let's see what SLC number one and SLC number three want to do. Let's start out with SLC number one. Waliche and Lille are going to push ahead one with one of their movement points, and they're going to use their operational skill to try to move ahead two. They need a four, five, or six on one of these dice. They get a six. They move forward. Now, this will bring into play the enemy frogmen who are also trying to detect them, but they are now underneath the Empire Centaur. So that's what it's called. Let's now go to Parkera and custard up here at the other side of the harbor entrance. Now, if they move forward two and then try to turn, they're going to spend an extra turn underneath this craft. So instead of that, what we're going to have them, and that would bring in the frogmen into play. So we're going to try to avoid that. We're going to use one point to have them move forward and then try to have them use their operational skill to turn and get pointed at this, the Amatam here, which is a big cargo ship worth two points. They need a four, five, or six to succeed. Ah, oh, they get a one, so that fails. So, Parkera and Liam are facing the wrong way, but they are near targets of opportunity. Now let's see what the enemy detection is like. With only two SLCs left in action and us getting close to the halfway point, we're gonna do these now on camera. First up, we need searchlights on 11 or greater to spot us as we're submerged and undetected. We get an eight for the first spotlight on SLC number one, while Liche and Lille, Liam and, um, sorry, Parkera and Custard need the same thing. They get a five, they are okay. Now we're gonna go, oh, we don't, the frogmen, yes, the frogmen do come into play because the frogmen are gonna dive around this cargo ship to see if they can spot Waliche and Lille. Now for the underwater dive teams under a cargo ship, they need an 11 or greater to spot us. These frogmen aren't very good. They get a six, they have no clue where we are. Now we're gonna to go to our patrol craft submerged response. They need a 10 or greater to detect us because we're still outside of the harbor. A six for Waliche and Lille, they are undetected. Parkera and Crema need the same thing. They get a five. We remain completely undetected in this round. That brings us to the halfway point of this mission. We'll be back in the second half of this mission and I'll put a link to it right here to see what happens. Can Waliche and Lille take out this cargo ship? Can Parkera and Custard make the maneuver and attack and sink their cargo ship? Could we get two massive cargo ships on the night? Turn into our next episode to find out.